Before I was a nurse, I started out as a nursing assistant and I also joined the military at the age of 17. In 2000, I got a really good opportunity through the military to go to a civilian program to become a licensed practical nurse. And I did that for about 18 years before I finished up my degree with WGU. My name is Andrew Nagel. I'm a registered nurse with the Indianapolis VA and I got my BSN from WGU. In the United States military, I was initially trained uh, back in the 1990s. It was called a 91 Bravo, which was a combat medic. I served in everything from combat support hospitals to uh, ambulance companies. Uh, I did a lot of instructing, and so that kind of brought me to 22 years, and after 22 years, I felt it was finally time to retire. Working at the Indianapolis VA as a registered nurse is outstanding. It's an amazing place to work. I kind of am specialized in that I follow congestive heart failure and COPD patients specifically. Working for veterans, taking care of veterans, working amongst veterans because a large portion of our working force is veteran also. You know, that as much as anything has kept me in touch uh, with my former career in the military and it's been wonderful. For me, the rewards have been being part of a team that goes out and gives vaccinations to patients who are stuck in their homes and can't get out to hospitals or clinics. And they are so thankful. I can walk into a veteran's home and we may come from vastly different worlds. Our upbringings might be different, we might be from different parts of the country, but because we have both served our country, we have that commonality. And as a nurse, that can be a very powerful thing because it helps build that nurse-patient relationship. And they'll chat your ear off. I mean, they're just happy that you're there and so thankful that you brought this medication out to them that's gonna help them you know, save their life, hopefully. Now is a great time to be a nurse. You're gonna feel good about what you do at the end of the day because you're helping people who need help.
Once you've experienced the benefits of WGU's affordable, personalized approach to getting your degree online, it's natural to want to tell everyone you meet. Now, there's an easier way to let friends and family know about WGU. Refer a Friend is a platform that makes it easy to tell friends and family about the benefits of WGU and earn rewards. Sign up just once to get a personalized link that you can share with as many people as you want on blogs, emails, forums, and your favorite social media platforms. You can track how many people have checked out WGU from your link and earn cool WGU gear in the process. More referrals, more rewards, more convenient. Sign up today to refer a friend and help us change people's lives through education.
Live and online from the T-Mobile Park, this is the 2022 Western Governors University commencement in Seattle, Washington. This ceremony is for the masters and virtual graduates. This is a live broadcast and will be available for replay on YouTube and WGU's website. Welcome. Welcome to the <laughs> Welcome to the 87th commencement for Western Governors University. My name is Tanya Drake and I am proud to serve as the Regional Vice President for the Northwest. I identify as she and her, and I also identify as First Nations. My father is Cowichan from Vancouver Island. <laughs> it is truly my pleasure to welcome you to Seattle. Graduates, families and friends, thank you for joining us as we celebrate this very special occasion. Our ceremony is being recorded and streamed live today. And I wanna give a special welcome to all those online viewers joining us across the country and around the world. The viewers probably won't hear it, but we will hear lots of sirens and um, trains and planes around, but that's okay, we'll enjoy it. Here in Seattle, we want to acknowledge that we stand on the traditional territory of the Coastal, Sta Coastal Salish, Stillaguamish, Duwamish, Muckleshoot, and Suquami Indigenous Nations. A land, yes. a land acknowledgement serves as a reminder to us all that we move towards equity and are committed to respecting tribal rights to sovereignty and self-determination while listening to, learning from, and uplifting the voices of indigenous people whose guardianship of this, la this land has continued since time immemorial. And now, if you are able, we ask you to please stand for the processional and remain standing for our national anthem. Thank you.
can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof That our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet Or the land of the free and the home of the Please be seated, everyone. <clears throat> Good morning and welcome. I'd like to thank Trilina Razor of Kettering, Ohio, for performing for that, in fact, wonderful rendition of our national anthem. Thank you, Trilina. <clears throat> Trilina obtained her MBA from WGU in May of this year and now works for a major healthcare system in Southern Ohio where she leads cross-functional teams and business in clinical process improvements. Thank you once again, Trilina. <laughs> Graduates, friends, guests, it is my honor to convene the 87th Western Governors University commencement. We are excited to be with you today celebrating your accomplishments. Please know that the safety of our graduates, guests, faculty, staff, and all attending or supporting this commencement is of utmost importance. We thank each one of you for taking the precautions necessary to allow this event to occur and for us to do so safely. On behalf of the entire university and our board of trustees, we welcome our honored graduates and congratulate you on completing one of life's great accomplishments. Joining us virtually today are 700 graduates also celebrating their achievements. We're delighted to have you, your families, and your friends with us as you celebrate your accomplishments. Thank you for being here. Let's give them all a round of applause. WGU graduates, this is a day I hope will remain with you forever. Each of you has accomplished something extraordinary. Your graduation is a milestone reached and a dream achieved. It's the culmination of numerous challenges faced and obstacles overcome. Since our founding 25 years ago, WGU has served night owls, those who are working hard and studying late, earning their degrees while they uphold commitments to families and to jobs. 
Today's milestone represents an unprecedented level of dedication, persistence, creativity, and resilience. And for that, we congratulate you and celebrate you. At this moment in history, the world needs you, indi needs individuals exactly like you, those unafraid of new challenges, those with the tenacity to surmount the insurmountable, the foresight to anticipate the unforeseeable, the flexibility to adapt, and the commitment to persist no matter what. Those who have shown us that there's only one way to go, and that is forward. The education you've received here at WGU has prepared you well for such a task. You're now equipped to move yourselves, your families, your employers, and your communities forward, and we know you'll all be successful. You join only 13% of adults in the U.S. who hold master's degrees. Many of you are graduating today with a family member. We offer special congratulations to those who are sharing this accomplishment with a loved one. WGU is grateful to be recognized year after year as a military-friendly university. We are especially proud to honor the military members who are graduating. We thank you for your service to our country. You may have noticed that our military graduates are proudly wearing red, white, and blue cords today to symbolize their service to our country. We thank these brave and selfless patriots. Will you please stand to be recognized? Thank you so much for your dedication to our freedoms. Also joining us are many of our WGU faculty and staff. Please join me in thanking them for their dedication and commitment to your success. Thank you. I'd like to share some facts about today's graduating class. 38% of you are the first in your family to earn a college degree. We extend a special congratulations to you. Your average age is 38, the youngest is 19, and the oldest is 72. Seventy five percent of you are women. <laughs> Thank you for showing us all the way. The average time to earn your degree was two years. 43 states are represented here today, and the state with the most graduates, with 530 attendees, is right here, the great state of Washington. Yeah. Yet our graduate who traveled the farthest to join us today, more than 3,081 miles, is from Boston, Massachusetts. Thank you for your dedication to be here. I'm a fan of both of those. I lived in Boston for 11 years and also lived here in Seattle for four years, so I love both of these places. So thank you for being here with us. You work diligently to reach an educational milestone that will change the course of your own history and influence future generations. Thank you for allowing all of us at WGU to play a part in the fulfillment of your dream. It has been truly our privilege. And now we have the honor, from hearing, uh, the honor of hearing from two of your fellow graduates. I'm delighted to introduce Emily Bertholik and Constance Alves. First, we'll hear from Emily from Washington, who earned her master's in teaching mathematics education from WGU in June of this year. Next, we'll hear from Constance, who has traveled here from Alaska and has earned her two degrees, has earned two degrees from WGU a Bachelor of Science in HR Management, and a Master of Science in Management and Leadership, both in 2020. Please welcome to the lectern, Emily.
Good morning, WGU graduates, faculty and staff, and honored guests. It's a privilege to share my story with you today. I was born to be a teacher, and we knew that early on. When my little sister was big enough to sit in a chair, I worked hard to teach her to write her name. She was more interested in eating her crayon, but I didn't let that discourage me. Every annual milestone page in my childhood scrapbook contains my mom's script declaring, Emmy wants to be a teacher when she grows up. By the time I reached high school, I had a glittering plan for my life neatly detailed in my Lisa Frank diary. I was going to be a teacher or a vet, marry the man of my dreams, have three beautiful children, and live happily ever after. But when I made those plans, I forgot to include the part where real life happens. At first, everything went according to plan. I graduated from college with a bachelor's degree in child development and married my third grade crush, Matt, who is still the man of my dreams. Yep, there he is. <laughs> it wasn't until our first daughter and son were nine and five that real life came crashing down. In 2011, Matt and I made the monumentalist decision to adopt a sibling group of three adorable little girls. Little did I know that that shattering would begin the process of reshaping and refining my dreams beyond my wildest imagining. The next several years were defined by the relentless agony of parenting from the trenches and the fallout of the unspeakable trauma our girls suffered before they were ours. As we struggled in the depths, we were shocked by an unplanned pregnancy, our fifth daughter. Then our son developed unmanageable epilepsy. My teaching career receded into the mist of my memory as I became hyper-focused on just keeping myself and my children alive. Eventually, one of our daughters had to go and live with a family member because we could no longer keep her and our other children safe. Our family was crushed beyond recognition. If you had sat me down six years ago and told me that we would go on to adopt two more big kids from Latvia and have a happy house full of thriving teens and one sassy mini-teen, I would have laughed in your face, but you would have been right. Mine is a story of redemption, the proof that even brokenness and despair can give birth to breathtaking beauty. I never dreamed that my drug-exposed daughters would become powerful advocates for foster care and adoption. I couldn't have guessed that the incredible challenge of parenting traumatized children would transform me into a fierce fighter for all kids and an expert in trauma-informed care. And our son's epilepsy led us to his alternative school, the school at which my teaching dream was reignited and I learned about WGU. With overwhelming gratitude, I recognize that those drowning years were forging an ironclad foundation for my future teaching career. The marks of my prior shattering remain, but they are evidence of a plan far grander than my own. My fellow night owls, I challenge you to look back on the road that has shaped you into the graduate that you are today. How has your story prepared you for the future that lies just ahead? You have received valuable skills and training during your time at WGU. Allow that knowledge to sink into the framework of life experience that is uniquely yours. Then take that dynamite combination and impact your world. Before I close, I have a few words of wisdom from my own journey to share with you. When hardship comes your way, and it certainly will, embrace it. It is in our most difficult seasons of life that we experience the greatest opportunity to grow in faith and character. Bloom where you're planted. Just as a flower can blossom in the tightest space, you can flourish and thrive wherever you land. And remember that no experience, no matter how hard, is wasted if you make the decision to use it for good. As for me, I have finally realized my little girl dream. Emmy wants to be a teacher when she grows up. The growing up part may have taken a longer and more treacherous path than I originally planned, but the view is stunning. <laughs> and the truth is crystal clear. Teaching is what I was born to do. To each of you, congratulations. 
Your hard work has paid off. We made it. I want to congratulate every single student graduating here today and future students who will one day be standing on this stage. Our stories are uniquely our own, but the emotion of accomplishing something we have worked so hard for is universal. I feel blessed to be able to share my story with you. I was finally close to achieving my dream of obtaining my bachelor's degree at Western Governors University. At the age of 59, I felt like I had it all. Then in a split second, it all changed. March 8th, 2019, three weeks before I was to turn 60 years old, I had my first car accident. I was rear-ended and did not know how badly I was hurt. I had shoulder surgery a month to the day of the accident. I spent many weeks in physical therapy. At the time of the accident, I had only completed two of the four student requirements for WGU for the semester. Try as I might, I could not find the strength to do anything but eat a little and sleep. My computer had been destroyed in the crash, making it even harder to access my studies. The suggestion had been made that I put school off for a while and continue once I was fully healed. For the first time, since my academic journey began, I was truly afraid I was going to fail. Achieving my Bachelor of Science, Business and Human Resource Management degree was paramount in my life. I sank into despair, feeling like my life would never get better. I knew I needed some hope to hang on to, and it came in the form of an email regarding the 2020 WGU commencement information. In looking through the materials, I became very excited because I saw that I could purchase my cap, gown, and tassel. They represented a light at the end of what seemed like a very long, dark tunnel. The day they arrived was like Christmas for me. Each time I found myself faltering or in need of some inspiration, I would take them out and picture myself walking across this very stage to receive my bachelor's degree. Because of my wonderful brother, John, I was able to purchase a new computer and I was on my way again. But the accident just kept on giving. My neck was getting worse. I was having trouble walking and truly looked like a drunk person trying to navigate a room. I went to the doctor and they took an MRI. It showed that I had a bone spur at C2, C3, compressing my spinal cord, which impaired the flow of cerebral spinal fluid to my brain. They scheduled me for emergency surgery, but I wanted to complete my managerial accounting class before surgery, just in case I didn't make it. I know, what was I thinking, right? <laughs> Between my mentor and the managerial accounting staff, they were able to schedule my test for the next morning they went above and beyond to help me prepare for the assessment. Because of my condition, I required assistance getting into the chair, and then I needed to hold on to the desk for the entirety of the three-hour test simply to remain upright. To this day, I am amazed that I passed. <laughs> I could not have made it through without my friend, the sister of my heart, Teresa. She was there to help and cheer me on each step of the way. I was in surgery within days and after having to learn to speak again due to my damaged epiglottis because of the surgery and long hours of physical therapy, I made it through. Without the tremendous support of my friends, family, my WGU family, I would not have achieved my goal, and I am so very thankful for all of them. Again, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate all the students graduating today for their successes, encourage future students to take advantage of all the resources available to you through our WGU student family. 
There are mentors, instructors, teachers, math tutors, the library, and so many more tools offered to you. Each one of us goes through trials and hardships, learning lessons and helping ourselves as well as others to grow. Always remember that no matter how bad things get, never stop dreaming and believing in yourself. But my story didn't end there. I'm not only here to celebrate achieving my bachelor's degree, but also to celebrate achieving my master's degree, a Master of Science in Management and Leadership. Thank you. Congratulations to you all. Thank you, Emily and Constance, for sharing your stories. Uh, I certainly am wondering, Constance, about your priorities. Um, <laughs> but WGU is the priority. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, okay. Note to self: when I'm in an accident or have pending life-threatening surgery, WGU comes first. That's the uh, <laughs> that's the way to think about it. that. I am I'm incredibly inspired by that. And Emily, also, thank you for exemplifying what we also believe here at WGU, and that is in the inherent worth of every individual. Uh, the mother and fathers that you uh, two have been to those children certainly exemplifies that in fact, if everyone is given the opportunity, they have something big to contribute. Uh, we are so grateful for your example as well, and grateful for both of you, Emily and Constance, for your inspiring stories, not only to us here at WGU, but to all of your fellow graduates and also all the students who are currently pursuing their degree. I love even just that image, Constance, that you shared of just seeing that cap and gown, seeing that there is a better version, an elevated version of yourself, and using that as an inspiration to be your drive through your life. So thank you for sharing that story. Now I'm pleased to introduce our commencement speaker, Andrew Jocelyn, composer, orchestrator, and violinist. He's an award-winning musical polymath whose passion for collaboration has led him to work with a remarkably diverse group of world-class artists, touring the world, performing, co-writing, and arranging music on over 400 songs throughout his career. Along the way, he has amassed an extensive list of writing, orchestrating, recording, and touring credits that include Macklemore, you might have heard of him from this great town, Keisha, Judy Collins, Leslie Odom Jr., Lizzie McAlpine, Nancy Wilson of Heart, Blind Pilot, Kate Flay, Chase Rice, Tom Chaplin of Keene, Michael Bolton, Duff McKagan of Guns N' Roses, the Seattle Symphony, and many others. Andrew currently runs his own music production studio in Seattle and has scored many or several feature-length films and writes, for mu writes music for artists, labels, podcasts, music licensing houses, and commercials. He is an avid, he is an avid music advocate with the Recording Academy as co-chair of National Advocacy, a board member of SMASH, or Seattle Musicians Access to su su Sustainable Healthcare, and has a mayoral appointment to the Seattle Music Commission. Please join me in welcoming Andrew Jocelyn. Dear Western Governors University graduates, I am so honored to be here and to welcome you to your new future careers after you leave this arena. My name is Andrew Jocelyn. Maybe you've never heard of me, but I can guarantee you have heard me. Or should I say you've heard my music? I'm a composer, I'm an orchestrator, I'm a violinist, an arts advocate, and a music business entrepreneur. I've scored several feature films, as Scott has mentioned, written music for commercials, written music with major artists. So if you've heard a Zillow or a Straight Talk Wireless commercial in the last couple of years, you might have heard one of my annoying little pieces of music. <laughs> my journey into this career and what I love to do has been a nonlinear approach. And not simple, but hopefully a little entertaining to share with all of you. My parents got me started playing classical violin at the age of five. My father's side of the family had a pretty heavy classical pedigree. My grandfather started the London String Quartet, 
my grandmother was a famous cellist with the MGM Studio Orchestra and performed with some of the leading conductors of the turn of the century like Rosinski, Bernstein, and others. So my father wanted to continue this family pedigree of classical music greatness. And that was a terrifying lineage to take on as a small child. I was always the kid in the back of the orchestra that was obsessed with U2, Tears for Fears, Sting. I, I, I am a child of the 80s. I enjoyed classical music, but I always dreamed of playing with the pop and rock and roll greats. My parents had no illusions of grandeur though, and weren't expecting me to be some amazing musician. They just wanted to give me a good education in the arts. All the actual pressure though actually came from the music community when I first started. In the field of Western classical music, we often set the expectation with young musicians that if they're just talented enough, hardworking enough, or entrepreneurial enough, they will find themselves on a pathway to success guided by the quality of their work. But as anyone who has graduated and worked with graduating college and conservatory students knows, this is a very incomplete truth. An optimistic vision that, at best, only a tiny fraction of students really see as their reality. But there is also an extremely narrow ideal career in music that is impressed on kids. Either you're an amazing concert soloist, and an orchestra professional, or a violin teacher. None of the above felt right to me. I remember once when I participated in a master class in classical performance and was playing a particularly challenging concerto and I played a certain note with a little too much vibrato or I just added a little too much of myself into the performance and the music teacher said that isn't how the composer would have intended it. I was floored. Who made this person the spokesman for the composer? How would they know how someone dead would have intended for a musician to interpret how to play their music decades later? I didn't want to be a classical jukebox for other people's music. I feel like life's too short to replicate other people's work. It took a long time for me to gain the confidence to feel like I had something really worth saying and writing. I was worried that a career in music was just not gonna be fruitful and that I had wasted years of my life studying, practicing, and I was doomed to not be successful and would have to pursue another career ultimately and give up on my ambitions. Parts of my story so far might not relate to a number of you, but the parts that I hope resonate are about finding your own voice and path and trying to find a purpose in life that is fulfilling, satisfying, viable and also unique to you. So in the middle of my midlife college crisis, I did the most non-sane thing someone in my position should have done. I joined a rock band. <laughs> I picked up an electric violin and I went on tour. I had no plan. I had no idea what I was doing. I just wanted to recklessly pursue my dream of playing rock and roll music. I also shifted my major in violin performance to a minor and got an English Lit degree just so I could get out of college with a bachelor's at the very least. Fast forward three years and I was barely making enough money from touring and playing bar gigs and playing at least 150 shows a year. The band was just bringing in enough money to keep the business of the band afloat, but that was relatively it. I tried to jump at every opportunity that was available to play with friends, record in the studio, hang out at other people's shows. I was hooked. I felt like embracing the dream was all I needed to do, that it would all fall into place. But that's not the case. I had the relative safety of having a full-time job during this time while I was testing the water in the music industry and was doing everything from temp work, working at Seattle Times, and eventually getting a job doing copyright compliance at Getty Images. Not very rock and roll. I needed to focus my commitment, but I also needed to be a realist. So I deep dove into learning everything that I could about the music industry and understand how it really works. 
And eventually I got a job working at a record label and learning about the business from the other side of the coin. Serendipitously, during this time, I met a gentleman named Ben Haggerty, AKA Macklemore, and we began working together. Little did we know that a short four years later, we would create a huge chart topping album, The Heist, that went on to receive seven Grammy nominations and four Grammy wins. At this time, I made the really important decision to fully embrace a career in music, quit everything else. Years of preparation, commitment, and patience were all finally coming together. Being a person who goes after a dream can be hard. Being a small business owner, a freelancer, an artist, it's all difficult and it's an ever-changing environment as well. There are many obstacles that I deal with as a professional musician, be it the turbulence of the industry, the future of streaming, copyright reform, dwindling album sales, licensing revenue, and this is all on top of just the basics of trying to write a song, compose a piece of music, and feeling that self-auditing fire that I do every time I pick up my violin. But there is a really important lesson to be remembered here with any career professional. You are never alone. In January of 2015, I was finally working full-time as a musician. Following my ambition and ambitions I had had since I was five years old, touring the world, writing music for major record labels, getting to hang out with Madonna, Jay Leno, perform on the Grammys, Good Morning America, the list goes on and on. And then a fire completely demolished my home in Seattle. A small electrical spark had set fire to the carpet and created a dirty fire, which set fire to the bed, which completely covered the entire apartment in black smoke. This was devastating to me. However, something incredible had happened. Underneath the burnt out bed frame was my violin case and my violin was completely untouched. It didn't even go out of tune. It had taken me aback and was a transformative moment. There was something magical about it too. However, what was even more incredible was that the entire music community in Seattle and beyond, years and years of musicians I had worked with and toured with, all came together and raised money to get me back on my feet. If it wasn't for the community, I don't think I would be where I am today. Which brings me to an important point that I want to repeat. You are never alone. So with that in mind, always pay it forward. Since then, I have dedicated countless hours towards being of service to the music industry and to do everything I can to make it a better place for all. I'm currently co-chair of National Advocacy with the Recording Academy, the Grammys, and speak with state legislators, local politicians, and others to work with them to make baby steps towards making music a viable, sustainable career path for anyone that has chosen this path. I want my kids and future generations to feel that a profession in the arts is real. Music is a real job. I just want to do hard work and be properly compensated and credited for that work. This is a basic tenet for any profession. So with that, there isn't a linear path to a career or a career that makes sense to you. Trying to find yourself or at least a career you're happy with is like stone carving. You start off at it slowly, chipping away little by little. And no matter how you may have envisioned what you want it to turn out, the stone in the end will tell you what it wants to become, and you're just slowly chipping it away and bringing it into existence. But every little chip matters, no matter how big or small your hammer swing. My current career isn't how I originally envisioned, but it is a culmination of everything I've done in this odyssey over the last couple of years. Regardless, if you're seeking a career in healthcare, tech, business, teaching, music, or beyond, there are only three little takeaways that I want to impart to you. Number one, commitment. We all have times in our lives when fear and excuses overpower us and get in our own way. Excuses can be so 
easy to use and bury yourself in. We seldom have anyone who holds us truly accountable for our dreams. What works to defeat fear and excuses then? Or who is the realist to challenge your inner fears then? Commitment. Commitment clears a path to achieving your goals and overcoming these inner barriers. Commitment also isn't reckless. Some people pursue dreams and have unrealistic expectations and give up at the first sign of challenge or turbulence. I took the time to really learn my own industry and manage my expectations and properly prepare myself to have a real career in my own industry. Number two, community. You are not alone. Don't go it alone either. As a community, strive to make your industry a better place than how you found it. The world is already full of self-serving mercenaries. Try and focus some of your energy on making it better, more equitable and sustainable place for all. And finally, you are the sum of all that has come before. There's nothing you do that is a waste, just as long as you learn and in truly internalize the educational opportunities. Even my time at Getty Images working on copyright compliance so, so many years ago added to my knowledge of copyright law and informs me daily on my work as a working professional content creator. Honestly, I appreciate all your time here today in listening to my story. I want to be the first to congratulate all of you on your own individual journeys and the sum of your experience that has led you to this moment. A career isn't really a career in actuality. It is a calling. And I believe you are all heeding that siren call and taking an important step to finding true purpose for yourselves in your lives and your communities. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Western Governors University Class of 2022. Go Night Owls! That was awesome. Uh, I even thought that somehow, Andrew, you actually started some of your background music, then I realized it's the Kenny Chesney warming up next door or something like that. <laughs> but, uh, that was awesome as well. Thank you so much, Andrew. Your journey is not unlike a lot of our graduates who are sitting here today. Going after a dream is difficult, as you said. But as you, you and these graduates before me and those joining us online can attest, the difficulties can all make it worthwhile. Thank you for being here today. And now we will proceed to the conferral of degrees. Thank you, Scott, and thank you, WG graduates, joining us virtually from around the country to celebrate your amazing accomplishment. First, we will recognize each of our master's degree graduates who wear a hood bearing the color of their discipline. Then we will recognize our bachelor's graduates. With the graduates for master's degrees and educator endorsement, please rise wherever you may be. Upon the favorable recommendation of our faculty and the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and member governors of Western Governors University, I hereby confer upon you the master's degree or endorsement you have earned to include the Masters of Art in your area of specialization, Master of Art in Teaching, Master of Business Administration, Master of Education, Master of Health, leadership, master of science in your area of specialization, master of science in nursing or educator endorsement with all the rights and privileges thereunto apparenting. Congratulations and welcome to the community of innovation, bold and credible professionals. Please be seated for the moment. And now our bachelor's graduates. With the graduates of the bachelor's degree and post-baccalaureate teacher preparation endorsement, please rise wherever you may be. Upon the favorable recommendation of our faculty and the authority vested in me by the board of trustees and member governors of Western Governors University, I hereby confer upon you the bachelor's degree or endorsement you have earned to include the bachelor of arts, 
and the Bachelor of Science in your area of specialization, with all the rights and privileges thereunto of parenting. You may now move your tassel from the right to the left side of your mortar board. And now it is our privilege to recognize you, our graduates from the College of Business, College of Health Professions, the College of IT, and the School of Education. Congratulations, graduates. I'd like to take this moment to recognize and thank the graduates wearing blue and gold philanthropy cords today for their generosity and support of other students and WGU's fellow Night Owl Scholarship. Philanthropy cords are not only a physical symbol of a graduate's commitment to WGU, but they're also support a legacy that will last for generations to come. Thanks to the incredible support of these alumni and thousands of alumni before them, nearly $200,000 has been raised for the Fellow Night Owl Scholarship, which has helped more than 160 students across the finish line to graduation. Thank you for your support in helping your fellow Night Owl succeed. The degree you have earned at WGU will create new pathways to opportunity. But it is important to remember that commencement is not the end. It represents a new beginning. Hello, I'm Mitsu Frazier, Senior Vice President of the College of Business. On behalf of all of us here at Western Governors University, including your program mentors, course instructors, and evaluators, we would like to congratulate you on earning your degree. We are proud of your accomplishment and wish you all the best. Gavin Jolly. Jessica Arnold. Teresa Bailey. Amber Blackmore. Juanita Conley. Lakeisha Files. Athena Gilliam. Jessica Halterman. Carrie Hollowell. Leandra Lucian. Kevin Ogle. Mark Owens. Christopher Riley. Jennifer Sterling. T. Van On Thok. Benita Warren. Chelsea Warrington. Lisa Rand. Jaquetta Ancrum. Simone Avent. Jalisa Barnes. Ashley Barnett. Brandon Brown. Trinique Brown. Katie Ferguson. Tyler Flyme. Sabrina Garner. Marvin Gonzalez. Mary Lloyd Taylor. Avewants Panki. Rebecca Pedler. Michael Porter. Lime Rini Mignat. Sherita Robinson. Natalie Chenault. Julia Wilson. Ellen Branstetter. Olabumi Adigoki. Sonia Ajuha. Elise Bailey. Jessica Boltzer. Mary Clay. Kayla Domorowski. Adrienne Gaff. Kimberly Graham. 
Heather Huahiwa. Anna Patricia Candelaria Perez. Felicia Sawyer. Juliana Sheline. Elizabeth Tahulski. Lori Bacon. Orlando Carroll. Mark Walder Jr. Congratulations to the graduates of the College of Business. Hi, I'm Dr. Jan Jones Shank, Senior Vice President and Executive Dean for the College of Health Professions at WGU. What an amazing accomplishment. You did it. Congratulations on completing your degree and joining our Night Owl family. On behalf of all of us at WGU, your program mentors, course instructors, curriculum developers, and evaluators, we wish you happiness and success in all your endeavors. Please stay in touch. Lawana Barnett. Morgan L. Brown. Samantha Cormier. Crystal Garrett. Sarah Garrett. Giselle Gomez. Susan Martin. Christina Parsons. Alyssa Sequinot. Linda Starr. Shelgwen Thomas. Banner Zimmerman. Sung Un Grace Yu. Lindsay Allen. Maria Cindy Diane Arce. Kina Barnes. Leela Blunt. Angela Corcoran. Edwina Herrera. Emily Keister. Stephanie Otis. Jill Reichard. Kevin Vale. Megan Dubrowski. Becky Jacobs. Jennifer Kolbeck. Donna Manzi. Karen Smith. Blake Thomason. Congratulations to the graduates of the College of Health Professions. Hello, I'm Ashutosh Tiwari, Senior Vice President and the Executive Dean of the College of IT. Wow, you did it. What an incredible accomplishment for you in reaching your goal to earn your degree. On behalf of all of us here at WGU, including your program mentors, course instructors, and evaluators, congratulations. We wish you the very best. Lauren Anderson. Kristen Aranda. Jackie Baitel. Joseph Gutierrez. Kenneth Hobson. Jeffrey Hogue. Brandon Horta. Nicole Johnson. John Jack Rybell. Frank Cialo. Melvin Scott Jr. 
Joshua Tete Afum, Annette Wong, Stefan Bumpus Barnett, Laura Isbell, Dakia Rayford, Madhulata Gatekonda, Joseph Hahn, Douglas Hoffman, Teresa Bartholomew Hull, Jacqueline Jones, Matthew Luminoso, Angela D. Shawan Steele, Congratulations to the graduates of the College of Information Technology. Hello, I'm Stacy Ludwig Johnson, and I'm the VP of Academic Operations for the Teachers College. We are so proud of you and your accomplishments. Congratulations on reaching this goal and earning your degree. From all of your program mentors, your course instructors, evaluators, and the field experience team, and the rest of the Night Owl Network, we wish you the very best. Lisa Cardona, Leanne Perez, Michelin Hill, Elizabeth Ostrowski, Sheila May Pickrell, Kathleen Potel, Miranda Z. Rodriguez, Sarah Villanueva, Cassandra Williams, Maria Denslow, Heather Evans, Marissa Phillips, Kira Bennett, Paula Berlaku, Holly Cashmer, Michelle Dixon, Deanna Hanna, Julie Kennedy, Caroline Covetalk, Sage Myers, Heather Olson, Louise Parsons, Michelle Reeves, Avery Sears, Hillary Speaker, Crystal Wong, Margaret Callow, Danielle Cardoso, Tambi Clark, Whitney Foster, Alice Garza, Detavius Cutts, Michelle Grimmett, Ryan Headley, Teddy Hefferman, Anna Kowalski, Jennifer Yamas Hernandez, Dean Trout, David Westbrook, Teresa DeVee, Nicole Heck, Anne Jesgars, Christine Keefe, Shannon Morgan, Gerard Newsom, Rachel Sanderson, Carrie Selvosky, Casey Simons, Monica Sponhorst, Christine Telford, Ashley Yasm, 
Jasmine Holdness. Connie Adkins. Amanda Alba. Kelsey Archer. Krista Arterbury. Emily Ballsbaugh. Renee Barup. Lindsay Bell. Kelsey Briner. Cami Bunting. Miriam Berman. Krista Copeland. Michelle Dang. Rebecca De La Rosa. Brianne Dean. Zachary Fisher. Madison Gonzalez. Rachel Harry. Jamie Maranzano. Carlita McGarity. Heather McMaster. Kristen Musenkiss. Carrie Niger. Savannah Nethington. Samantha Olson. Amanda Peterson. Jennifer Prosser. Bonnie Skears. Karen Swing. Taylor Tuckett. Andrea Wagner. Crystal Cummins. Nicole Williams. Tiersha Lenoir. Congratulations to the graduates of Teachers College. Minka Bernard. Aliza Munoz Esti. Holly Fries. Kyrea Jones Walsh. Joanne Klein. Sharon Smith Davis. Emmeline Fletcher. Ashley Gibson. Barbara Mofield. Kayla Reynolds. Kimberly Short. Vera Winters. Lisa Boone. Denise Dentley. Latricia Glenn. Melissa Hedman. Andre Clark. Jason Schaefer. Jay Vega. Julia Wu. Peggy Crew. Jennifer Elder. Valerie Ponce. Alicia Dennison. Justin Elkins. Tabitha Green. Vanity Mays. Laurel Potter. Hercules Hurtado. Stacy Kinney. Shante Austin Prince. Diana Deeds. Amanda Jackson. Tanisha Maynard. Elizabeth Pullings. 
Bianca Spears, Daryl Briggs, Joseph Salazar, Jensen Savage, John Wilson, Paulina Shanae, Anthony Colette, Tara Folkrod, Erica Gray, Elizabeth Irwin, Lenora Kemmerling, Blair Morant, Angela McCant, Vanessa Medford, Angelica Rowley, Jacqueline Taylor, Rebecca Trujillo, Jolie Jurgens, Tiffany Post, Erica Webb, Congratulations to the graduates of the College of Business. Erica Claiborne. Bernita Epps. Emily Frazier. Jasmine Gonzalez. Danae Hall. Elaine Jeffers, Mish Macy, Jennifer Parr, Jamie Connolly, Angelica Ballum, Juan Barreras, Valerie Chambers, Anna Marie Clark. Sharina Coffin, Chantel Coleman, Leslie De La Tour, Michelle DeBossi, Stephanie Decker, Corin Drum, Jennifer Gomez, Ashley Guillory. Carolyn Hall, Kaylee Ibsen, Valerie Ibsen, Tasonia Shamor Johnson, Brittany Jordan, Florence Juma, Dory K. Lane, Amber Lieberman, Rachel Matthews, Kelly Morgan, Zelina Naranjo, Jance Ashley Navalta, Tricon Paris, Jolene Peters, Sophia Shikanor, Zoe Sansel. Janine Sumpter, Basaria Tamba, Congratulations to the graduates of the College of Health Professions. Daniel Pham, Nicholas Butalid. James Mills, Brendan Redlask, Andrew Stokes, Spencer Verhoff, 
Christopher Barquin, Jeffrey Christian, Zachary Danforth, Monica Hopelian, Jonathan Lee, Edward Laredo, Darren Jason Rodillion, Edward Skipka, Robert Springston, Jonathan Stewart, Troy Williams, Joseph Emmanuel Cayetano, Stephen Moody, Karen Bogard, Sylvia Quintanilla, Deray J. Shifara, Justin Story, Nelson Tiku Tegum, Tyler Walker, Bradley Pike II, Javier Vasquez Jr., Brandon Lucas, Jason Waltz, Congratulations to the graduates of the College of Information Technology. Brenda Baiza Dirk, Carly Calderon, Abraham Suvios, Hannah Collins, Stacia Cruz, Amber Feltner, Anna Lillian Gammons, Morgan Gill, Veronica Hallmark, Julia Hawkins, Nakisha Hayes, Dominica Rosalina Lamana, Harolyn Landrove, Rachel Leon, Tiffany Lindblom, Leslie Lopez, Cassandra Martinez, Veronica Mercado, Ashley Pierce, Lindsay Ronick, Jessica Thome, Brandy Broyles, Victoria Ramirez, Lacey Stinnett, Leslie Anger, Chastity Basham, Brittany Beecham, Angela Brown, Bethany Bayard, Shannon Castle, Taylor Cormier, Amanda Crippen, Madison Eccles, Melissa Forget, Christina Alexandra Gonzalez, Rebecca Gore, Kimberly Haynes, Asia Holfeltz, Tristan Holloway, Emma Irvine, Jenna Landry, Tiffany Lee, Nicole Little, Mindy Mack, Rachel McGinnis, Heather Martinez, Ashton McGuire, Stephanie Mejia, 
Alicia Cecilia Medina Mettler. Allison Oliver. Diane Philpot. Nicole Podgorski. Lakita Porter. Michelle Ramey. Shanna Rodenbaugh. Kristen Schrader. Jessica Smith. Kayla St. James. Katherine Turner. Brittany Wilkinson. Emily Worm. Brianna Sears. Samantha Curtis. Nathan Davenport. Raymond Harper. Danielle Sadler. Heather Schock. Emily Van. Calissa Eilrich. Siobhan Few. Jessica Galindo. Dana Gripke. Katie Holman. Angie Machia. Misty Montes. Margaret Ropeter. Victoria Zapeta. Chelsea Blake. Kevin Helms. Sarah McCullough. Congratulations to the graduates of the Teachers College. As we close today, I hope you'll take a moment to reflect on the pride you felt during this ceremony. Thank you for letting us be a part of your educational journey and celebrate with you. As you celebrate, remember to share your excitement on social media, media using the hashtag WGUGrad. And now this concludes our ceremony. Congratulations to our Night Owls of 2022.
Thank you.